One of my favorite video games of all time is a video game called Civilization 6, or Civ 6 for short. And if I've already lost some of you here at the beginning of the video, just stay with me here. The reason I enjoy Civ 6 so much is because it's a fun historical thought experiment on what if. What if Cleopatra, Pericles, Gandhi, and John Curtin all had the same starting point in building their respective civilizations? Who would come out on top militarily? economically, culturally, and religiously. That's the basis of this video game. And in this game, all players start at the same starting point, in the year 4000 BC with two distinct characters at their disposal. The first character is a settler, which allows you to found your first city, and the second character is a warrior to, well, you know, do warrior stuff. The reason I decided to highlight this game at the introduction of this video is because I think that this game has always helped me understand how integral war is to the human experience. One of the greatest privileges of my lifetime is the fact that I've been shielded from the horrors of war being born in the United States in the year 1997 and growing up from that year until now. But you're probably still asking yourself, okay, Drew, but what does this have to do with how war has become fashionable? I got you, just let me get there. War, like culture, geography, and technology have had a profound effect on the fashion world as we know it. And in today's video, we're gonna explore how the garments used for war have now become fashion. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew. What to do? It's nice to meet you. Let's talk war and fashion. What's wrong with your lip? I was born with big gums, sir. Yeah, well, you better tuck that in. The history of the world is big, but one of the most tragic recurring occurrences in world history is war. One of my favorite quotes from John Curtin in the Civ 6 video game is, War can only bring us loss. Loss of lives, loss of productivity, loss of our very humanity. But when we shift the lens away from all the bad that war brings, because there is a lot of bad, I think that there's a strong case to be made that because of war, fashion has benefited massively over several generations. Let's take a few examples from past and previous military attire and compare it with modern garments that we see today. Starting with the Persian Empire, I think a lot of people recognize this empire as being one of the most prominent and powerful empires over the course of human history. And one of the reasons that the Persian Empire was so dominant is because of their military might. And one of the coolest wrinkles about the history of this empire is that the Persian Empire actually had a special infantry military group called the Immortals. That's the name of them. They were called the Immortals. Like today we have superheroes that are called the Avengers, but this military group was actually deemed the nickname of the Immortals. That That's pretty cool. <laughs> and most distinctly, this special military group had special military attire. It's only fitting, right? The Immortals were not equipped with heavy body armor. Instead, their clothing consisted of a soft felt cap, an embroidered tunic with sleeves, a coat of scale armor underneath that tunic, and trousers, as depicted here. When looking at historical war garments, it's always so interesting being able to compare and contrast those garments to what you see today in modern fashion. Persia's empire existed in modern day Egypt, Turkey, and and most notably and most prominently Iran. And I think modern designers like Perea Farzane are a great reference point that highlight a blend of old textiles with modern silhouettes. Let's look at one more example to hone in on this notion that past war garments play a role in dictating modern fashion. If you don't know, some of my personal favorite designers and artists are Japanese. And Japan, like so many other nations, have a deep and rich history. Most notably, Japanese samurais were hailed as some of the most intense and fierce warriors of their day. And if we take a look at some of the outfits that most samurai wore, and of course it varied based on class and rank and success. If we take a look at some of these outfits, you'll find that samurai armor consisted of a kabuto, which is a helmet, mengu, a mask, do, a chest of armor or a chest armor, 
all being paired with shoulder guards, sleeves, a skirt, and a shin protector. When looking back at Samurai in particular, there's a bit of mystique, at least for me, there's a special bit of mystique and coolness when it comes to these warriors. The first comparison I think about when we're talking about ancient Samurai comes in the form of actually looking at the modern Japanese denim company, Samurai Jeans. While a totally different style of clothing, Samurai Jeans and Samurai Warriors actually have a lot of distinct similarities within the ethos of both organizations. Samurai the Warriors were some of the most well-trained and highly skilled warriors, while Samurai Jeans, the denim company, are some of the most well-trained and highly skilled denim producers in the world today. Plus, the original patches used to decorate the back of samurai jeans depict two famed samurai warriors, Musashi and Kojiro, whose duel has been spoken about for over 400 years because it was so epic. And there are many more examples of ancient military garments, from Romans to Native American tribes, African military groups, and we can probably pinpoint different attire for each and every military group that has ever existed throughout the course of history. But when I say military wear, or if I'm talking about fashion that derives from military clothing, the images that probably pop into your mind are the images from soldiers who fought in battles during the early to mid 20th century. World War I and two garments, combat boots, bomber jackets, and officer uniforms, just to name a few. Mainly menswear, but there are also some elements of women's wear in there. Let's get into how these more modern war garments have become fashionable. What do you think are some of the most popular war garments turned fashion? There are a ton, but I wanna talk about four in specific. When it comes to garments made specifically for functionality, there may be no better, more functional item of footwear than the combat boot. And I think combat boots are potentially the most prominent military item that has ever crossed over to mainstream wear and has mainstream appeal. Even the term combat boot, when I search it up in Google, has a connotation more closely associated with the Doc Martin 1460 boots than a military tactical boot used for war. While Doc Martin 1460s are actually designed after combat boots from World War I and World War II, they have definitely been recontextualized for a more casual and modern wear. And to me at least, when I just hear the term combat boot, when someone's referring to a combat boot, especially in fashion spaces, they're just talking about a casual boot or casual shoe rather than a boot used to actually fight someone. To me, the biggest reason why I think combat boots have grown in mainstream popularity is because of their blend of functionality and aesthetics. Culture and fashion usually disseminates in predictable ways. Once a clothing item reaches an accessible price point and is worn by a noteworthy cultural figure, mass adoption tends to follow in that roadmap. One of my personal favorite boots that I own that are in the realm of combat boots are a collaboration between Maharishi and and fray cap. The Maharishi fray cap jungle boots came out in 2021 and their design is based off of the same boots worn during the US in the US Vietnam War. And even the term jungle boots are boots made specifically for jungle warfare. The boots are specifically designed to withstand wet, hot, and humid environments. Perfect for walking around the streets of New York, right? Because that, that's what I did, right? <laughs> that's that's how I wore the boots. <laughs> and cool side nugget here, the company Freycap, which was one of the main collaborators on the Maharishi Freycap jungle boots, has been making boots for the Italian Army and Air Force since 1948. So they have a long heritage in boot making and military attire. A lot of modern lug sole boots that you see in the streets today take inspiration from 20th century military boots as well. Danner, one of the most iconic American lug sole boot companies, earned its first government contract during World War II, which it supplied work boots during that conflict. 
Fast forward to now and Danner has such a wide breadth of boots from military boots to lug sole boots and hiking boots. And last year, and I think they've done this before, Danner collaborated with Jound. The pipeline for Danner from military slash work focused clothes to trendy boots in collaboration with Jound is one of the most interesting examples of how war has become fashionable. Next, let's touch on bomber jackets. Bomber jackets were made and designed for bomber pilots. Bomber jackets are yet another example of how a military garment has turned into a normalized form of casual wear. Alpha Industries is a brand that comes to mind that has done a great job of recontextualizing what the modern look of a bomber jacket can be like for someone who's not a bomber pilot. Next, cargo pants. How can I talk about military garments and not mention the pocketification of clothing with the cargo pant? Every modern military in the world is focused on providing the most functional attire for their soldiers, at least ideally. And one of the ways you create higher functionality for the clothing that your soldiers are wearing is to slap as many pockets on the top and the bottom half of their garments as possible so that they can carry as much as possible. <laughs> this notion culminated the invention of cargo pants. And it's just so clear, cargo pants are worn by so many people casually today. In fact, I feel like Many people on TikTok and online have said that cargo pants are trending and it's just one of those really obvious examples of how military garments have spilled into casual civilian wear. And last, let's touch on denim. Denim is such an amazing fabric. In fact, I'm wearing some denim jeans right now. I love denim so, so much. But another reason why it's so amazing is because it's gone through so many different periods that have made it historically interesting. And one of its most iconic periods was during the early 20th century, when the US Army adopted blue denim work clothing as the standard fabric for US Army work attire, totally revolutionizing the perception of denim forever. I hope you sort of see the picture that I'm trying to paint. Maybe it's really obvious to you and you think that war garments have always played a big role in fashion. Even most recently with the war in Ukraine, there was a moment in 2022 when Chechen commander Romazan Kadyov was seen wearing Prada combat boots, which at first glance look kind of normal, but then when you realize that these are thousand dollar plus designer boots, being outfitted by a military commander. I think it's just another prime example of how war and fashion are truly intermingled and how war has become fashionable. Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you want to sell your products direct to consumer or if you just want to display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you needed a sign to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash Drew Joiner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I mentioned the Maharishi Freak Cap Jungle Boots. I mentioned bomber jackets, cargo pants, and jeans. Another brand that comes to mind is Ore NYC. I've talked about Raymia's brand many times on the channel as he uses military motifs to design the clothing he creates. Owen Hyatt's brand, Somar, just came out with a new new pair of boots that's heavily inspired by combat boots called the grunt boot by somar camo oh my goodness how could i forget to mention camo camo as a fabric is used to camouflage yourself from your enemy in combat scenarios is as well another one of those really prominent military based fabrics and textiles that has crossed over and gained mainstream acclaim. Another trend that has taken place over the course of the last three-ish years or so, it was big during the pandemic, have been military liners. I think I would be remiss not to mention fatigue trousers and fatigue pants in general. I think a lot of people wear those as 
casual garments. Military clothing is so well integrated into modern fashion. I think for most people, they truly don't give it a second thought. It's just like any other item of clothing. Let's conclude this video by focusing in on how war has become fashionable. The most obvious way to calibrate how war has become fashionable is to do what we just did. Highlight all the brands and designers and products and collections that use military motifs to design their clothing off of. Some more examples that I found very quickly on the internet include Reese Cooper, Filson, and La Mer, just to name a few. But the thing that I think makes military clothing so prevalent are the perceived benefits that you gain from wearing the clothes. Military garments are meant to decorate the fiercest, hardest working, and toughest human beings on the planet. Qualities that normal civilians want to capture within their lives without having to take the life of another person. And over the course of history, there's been a shift. The shift away from a select few people having power to the power being distributed amongst the masses also plays a big role in my opinion. What I mean is from the 12th century and even before the 12th century, but from the 12th century to the 19th century, the most distinguished clothes belong to the monarchs and the richest people within the society. Once we get into the 20th and 21st century, equality really starts to take root and you see the fruits of this ideology of equality take place. And one of the largest consequences of equality is how we dress and our attire. Military-based clothing is at the heart of this movement and is a strong symbol for the populace. Being able to recognize that functional, stylish clothing is available for all people. What did I miss in this topic? And if you've ever served in the military here in the United States or in whatever region of the world you're in, let me know your perspective on this down in the comments. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you, wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace. What is good post vid vid? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day today. Here's a fist bump for the one time. Bop. Are we getting tired of fist bumps? Let me know. I, I'm feeling like I feel like I'm seeing less people comment about the fist bumps. Okay, I'm only giving one because I don't feel the fist bump energy right now. Okay, but for the post vid vid question of the day, leave hashtag PVV if you stayed all the way to the end of this video. Who would you love to sit at a table with and talk to? um from history if obviously dead or alive who would you love to sit and talk with at a table i have a list i put gandhi nelson mandela mlk jr and jesus i think that would be an interesting table worth of people and um that's who i would talk to at a round table let me know who you would talk to at your round table and uh, we'll see you guys in next week's video peace